Welcome back to the TMC Project, and I'm grateful to have you here. Today I bring you Jeff Hayden and six ways to make better decisions. On any given day, we make between 50 to 100 choices and decisions in the day. Can you imagine how much different your life would be by just making slightly better decisions every time? Well, in this article, we're going to talk more about the six best ways to make better decisions. Jeff Hayden is the New York Times best-selling author of The Motivation Myth. He wrote an amazing book explaining how to get yourself going when you don't feel like it. In today's article, he also shows us six ways of making better decisions. This article pulls from some amazing books and authors like Dan Ariely's book, Predictably Irrational, Daniel Kahneman's, Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow, and other great resources on how the mind and decision-making works. I'm excited to share them with you. For many of us, one of the biggest reasons that we can make a bad decision for ourselves is loss aversion. The human mind, when measured, tends to fear loss at a two-to-one ratio of gain. In the book Thinking Fast and Slow, Daniel Kahneman had an awesome experiment showing that people would need to gain twice as much before willing to risk the same amount. Now this should say a lot about our decision making and our emotions. Whenever you're looking at a benefit in your life, and there are some more obvious losses, take a moment, pull back, and really weigh out how, lo how bad those losses are, what would really happen in your life, and what the effects of making the decision and going forward with it would be. Most times, our brain will give us many reasons why we shouldn't move forward, but they tend to be very thin. Thinking about them any harder and they'll fall away. Don't let loss aversion be a reason that you make a bad decision. Another powerful unconscious bias that we always want to be made aware of is anchor setting. Whenever you're discussing something and you're not sure to where the value lies on it, know that whatever anchor is set first, whether it's you or the other person, that has a dramatic influence on the entire situation. Your mind from there on will measure against that. And it can be very dangerous. Don't let someone else put you in a position where you're measuring against their anchor. Decide yourself what something's intrinsic value is to you, as well as what it might be to someone else. And then set your own anchor and fight for what's yours. But don't let someone anchoring an incredibly low price on your value of service deter you from thinking you're more valuable. Set a higher anchor at first, and that way you're confident in your number and allow them to be uncomfortable in the anchor that you've set and figure it out. Don't get caught by someone else anchoring you to a bad number and being lost in the decision-making process. Always know that all prices and times are negotiable, and just because someone says something doesn't mean it's fact. It's just their opinion of value. Don't let their anchor set you up for failure. Jeff Faso tells us about this incredible idea called Not Invented Here. And once reading it, it made a lot of sense, although I didn't get it at first. He's merely saying that it's very hard for anyone to love an idea that isn't theirs. So it's very common when you are in the process of making decisions, many people will come to you with different ideas. And because it wasn't invented here within yourself, it can't seem to be adapted and implemented. Or on the flip side, when you have a great idea and you're really trying to get your team on board, the one and sole reason they may not be able to onboard it to their, you know, their own systems is it didn't come from themselves. It hasn't been embedded in such a way. This is incredibly important. Always know that whenever you hear an idea and it's not yours, that there may be an innate part of you that won't agree with it merely because it doesn't come from within. Remove all that. Be self-aware that the ego is always trying to make itself feel important. And instead, look at that idea. See how it can be implemented. See where the benefits are. And push the idea forward regardless of whether it was yours or someone else's. If the idea works, the person who created it will work hard for its success. And that's how success happens, through interest and effort. So be mindful that all ideas are welcomed regardless of where they came from. The flip side of that he recommends is really requiring any idea to be proposed to have success somewhere else. By requiring you to show a track record on the idea, it can't be anyone's first. It's already happened. We're just facilitating it and bringing it to the table. It's a great idea, and in any brainstorming session, I bet it's a great way to 
have people feel more open about bringing many different ideas, especially if they heard them from somewhere else. And the last one I want to share with you is the my side bias, also called confirmation bias. However, I think Jeff has really coined it perfectly. I'm really smart and let me show you why. How many times have we been unable to hear an idea because our mind is just giving us every reason why what's in our head is right and every reason why the idea we're hearing isn't right? It's crazy how powerful the brain can be in such a way. And as you learn more, you get a plague of knowledge and that you don't know how much you've learned and what comes easy. You also don't know what you don't know, which means it can be very difficult to onboard new information when your mind is flooding you with confirmation bias and only bringing in data that will support you to move forward, leaving you blind, leaving a huge availability for blind spots. So make sure to never let confirmation bias hide other facts that could allow you to make better decisions. This was a really powerful article. I want you to read the whole thing. If you follow any one of these steps throughout the next two weeks, you'll notice a massive difference in your decision-making process, and you'll see the results benefit from that. Remember, making a better life is really just changing your daily decisions and adding small beneficial habits so that way your autopilot is always optimizing you as well. The TMC project is dedicated to showing how easy personal development can be but being very honest with how much effort it still takes. I'm grateful that you guys have joined me on this journey, and I look forward to helping you in all your personal development goals. You have a great day. Try to make better decisions, and let's go.